Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sneha and today I'm going to be trying out some new makeup. This includes both drugstore and high-end products. So if you'd like to see how I created this and a demo of all the products I'm testing, then please continue watching. So I already have my moisturizer on. Next I'm going to use an eye cream. This is new. This is by the brand Beauty Pie. And the claims are that it fights under eye puffiness, hydrates and soothes. And it improves the appearance of dark circles, increased skin tone and firmness, and hydrates and improves skin texture. It's infused with powerful peptides to help firm and moisturize. It is fragrance free. So I've just taken a small amount on my ring finger. Applying it under my eyes. It feels quite hydrating. And quite lightweight as well going to let that sink into my skin so it sounds like a miracle eye cream I will have to report back and I think I will be making a full video of just beauty by products so if that's something that interests you definitely leave it in the comment section below but that's sunk in quite nicely into the skin quite quickly which is nice I don't like too emollient eye creams just because I do have oily eyelids and I don't want my concealer creasing or my mascara smudging so this seems quite nice, at least based on first impressions. Next is a sunscreen. This is the one I'm going to try today. Again, it's a product I received yesterday in my order. And it's a Featherlight SPF 50 with light absorbing DNA shield and chromophores to help fight inflammation and sun damage. Just going to apply this all over. Previous sunscreen I tried from them was too emollient for my liking. So hopefully this one is slightly more lightweight. Yeah, you can feel it sink into the skin much better. And it's also drying the first place that it applied. So yeah, I definitely like this way better than the other sunscreen they have. Next, I also want to try this product by Danessa Myricks. This is the Prism FX Hydrating Lotion, and this is in the shade Peach. So it's a hydrating lotion. It can also be a foundation mixer or be used as a primer. I'll start on the high point and see how illuminating it is. So that's what the product looks like. I've used like a tiny dot. Okay, let's apply it right here. It is quite illuminating as you can see, so I don't think I want it everywhere. I'm going to keep it to the high points of my face. But it feels like a um, lightweight moisturizer going on. Next, moving on to foundation. I did have a couple of foundations to choose from, but I think for today's video, I'm going to be trying out the Oma foundation. This is their Say What foundation which is meant to have a weightless, soft matte hydrating formula. So this retails for $29.50, comes in 51 shades. What is also interesting about this brand is that not only do they cater to a large variety of skin tones, but they also cater to skin type, if that makes sense. I'm just going to read off their website. It uses an innovative shade identifier known as the Fitzpatrick scale, which measures skin's reaction to the sun. So Oma Beauty has identified six beauty categories depending on undertone skin chemistry and common issues associated with the said skin type this basically means that there isn't just one formula but six different formulas to suit the individual needs and common concerns often associated with each skin type so honey honey which is the one i have is meant for olive skin a skin shade most commonly associated with premature aging, I was sad to hear that, and dry combinations. So the formulation contains rose hybrid extract to repair by contributing to elastin induction while protecting the sun from inflammation and free radicals and reducing sebum production. It's a beautifully lightweight, long-wearing, hydrating formula that grants adjustable coverage so you can build up from subtle to full before it dries to a soft matte finish. Again, this is both vegan and cruelty free. So let's give it a go. So I've added some onto the palette. I'm just going to do a little swatch to see if it's a good shade match for me. I feel like it's a fairly decent match. 
So to apply it, I'm using my Sephora Mini 56.5 brush. It does start off with a nice uh, medium coverage, I would say. The color seems a little off for me. It's a little bit too neutral. So what I'm going to do is maybe add a touch of the yellow adjuster and see how that looks on this half of my face. In person, I prefer this one. It's more neutral and blends better with the tones on my neck. This side looks a tad bit too yellow for my liking, but I don't know how it's going to translate on camera. So what do you guys think? Just to balance it out, I'm just going to add a thin layer of whatever is remaining on this side of my face. Okay, so this is what the foundation looks like. It did go on quite nicely, has a good medium coverage to begin with. Just going to go in with a second layer to see if it can cover any of my acne discoloration a little bit better. Generally I don't do this um, just because I use a concealer for that. Just building up with the foundation. Definitely build double. I don't know if you can tell on camera. But the coverage is getting to a good full coverage. You can tell compared to the side, we can still see quite a bit of the texture on my skin. So this is what my skin looks like with that second layer just on my cheeks. Beautiful medium to full coverage. Without looking cakey, my skin look, still looks very much like skin, which I quite like. Next, I don't have a new bronzer, but I do have this new e.l.f. shade adjuster in the shade Bronze. So although this is meant to alter the shade of your foundation, to deepen it or lighten it depending on your skin tone, I think I'm going to try it as a bronzer today to see how it looks. And then for the foundation, I was meant to use a new brush. <laughs> this is the e.l.f. Buffing foundation brush, but I completely forgot. So I'm going to try and use this for the liquid bronzer. That applied quite nicely and blends quite well as well. And the brush is quite nice, it's more dense than I'm used to. Still, nice brush, especially for the price. I believe this one is. Yeah, only six pounds, so that's a great deal for the brush. And the size is not too big. That bronzed up quite nicely. I think that applied and blended out quite nicely. I really enjoyed the brush as well so far. I also have another new brush that I want to test. This is from My Kit Co. and the number is 0.12. This is meant for powder products. I'm going to try it with a powder bronzer. And since I don't have anything new, I'm just going to use my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer in medium. Oh, it's a very nice brush. So soft. Quite quick as well. Beautiful brush. Next, let's move on to eyeshadow. I don't have any new brow products or eye primers, so I'm just going to use my regulars and be right back. For eyeshadow, I have this little e.l.f. palette. These are called the bite-sized eyeshadow, and the shade I have here is Carnival Candy. These generally retail for three pounds here in the UK, but I got it for 240 on sale. So let's try them on and see how it looks. So it has three neutrals right here and I, it looks like all three are matte and then a pop of shimmer which is that blue. 
So I do have some new brushes to try. So I'm going to try the My Kit Go 1 brush. I'm going to use the lighter shade. I think it's going to be too light for me. So just a light hand. Quite well pigmented. Okay, that's it for the brow bone highlight. I'm going to use the My Kit Go Pro 1.15 brush. So any fluffy brush will work for this. Going into the second shade right here. Apply that as my transition. And in case you're wondering, the eye primer I have is the usual. So it's the NARS eye primer. That is really good pigmentation and blendability for a under three pound eyeshadow palette. Elf has really stepped up their game. For my outer V, I'm going into this third shade right here. I'm using my Refer 01 brush. Let's see how deep the shade is. I'm just going to repeat the same with these two matte shades along my lower lash line. I haven't applied concealer yet. And then for close to the lash line, I'm switching to a smaller brush. This is by My Kit Co and it's the 1.16 brush going into that red shade. Just applying it to the outer, maybe one third. Next on to the shade that I'm most curious about. I don't know if it's going to pick up well on a uh, brush, but I'll give it a go. So I'm using the My Kit Co 1.5 brush, but if this doesn't pick up, then I think I'll use my finger to get the shade on. It does have quite a bit of kick up. Oh, it applies really beautifully. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised. Wow, this is my favorite shade from the palette, if you can't tell. <laughs> it goes on like this dry. I wonder what's the potency with a wet brush, but that's for another time. <laughs> Just going to take this three fourths of the way in. Do you guys see that I haven't blended it yet, but look at that color payoff. Going back in with that blending brush. There's a little bit of fallout, but not much. Just going back in with that orange red shade. I feel like I'm missing a black or something to deepen up the outer corner, but I'm just going to stick to this palette. I almost want to take the blue all over the lid. What do you guys think? I think so. I'm going to do that. Don't feel like the, the orange at the outer corner is deep enough and I don't want to go into a second palette so might as well make this a uh, all blue smoky eye. <laughs> then we can add a little bit more orange on the bottom lash line. Just blending it into the socket. I'm going to add a little bit more of that orange rusty shade along the lower lash line. It's nice because it's going to contrast with the blue, it's complementary colors. Okay, and that is the eye look with this little palette. Now I'm going to come in closer to the camera so you can see how much fallout there is. But I'm just going to use my foundation brush just to clean up this area. There's another eye product that I did want to try before moving on to concealer and it's the eyeliner. This is a gel eyeliner by Delilah. I believe the shade is Epony, I think. So this has been raved about by many makeup artists for being like their best eyeliner. So I really wanted to get it and try it out. So let's see how it goes. Hopefully it's the blackest, creamiest, most beautiful gel liner ever be used. It's described as a soft texture that glides onto the skin easily for a smooth line with no dragging on the delicate eye area. Perfect to also use in the top and bottom waterline, which is good to know. And can also be used to color and define the eyebrows because they do have other shades. It's water and smudge proof formula. That's good. It's highly pigmented and applies smoothly and it's vegan, cruelty free dermatologically tested and paraben free. So it does come sealed like this. Just going to take a little bit on my palette. It's about so much right here. Then for my liner brush, I'm going to use this one, which is a new brush by Suwa. This is the number 630, really fine brush. So if you can see there, I bought a smaller version of this as well, but I think this will be good for eyeliner. 
Okay, so that's a nice thin line across my lash line. It is creamy, but I don't see it as the blackest liner I've ever used. I'm going to create a small wing. I'm definitely going to also use it to tight line my top waterline. So I'm just going to finish off mascara off camera because I don't want to open any new mascaras at the moment. So I'm going to use my regulars and then we'll be back to do concealer and the rest of my face makeup. Moving on to concealer. The new concealer that I have is by e.l.f. and it's the 16 hour camel concealer. And I picked up the shade Tan Sand. This is meant to be for tan skin tone with olive undertone and this retails for five pounds. It comes in 26 shades. It's a full coverage 16 hour wear concealer featuring a large toe foot applicator to conceal, correct, contour and highlight for flawless skin. It's a highly pigmented formula yet is lightweight, dries matte and doesn't settle into fine lines and creases. That is a tall claim and it's ideal for all skin types. So let's test this out. It does have a pretty big toe foot. Let's give it a go. I'm going to get my concealer brush. This is the Zoeva 146. Just going to do a small dot just because I don't like too much concealer. And especially if it has full coverage, I don't want too much of it on. Yeah, a little is definitely going a long way. Just using that to clean up the eye area. And even what I put is a bit too much. You see how much coverage it's given me <laughs> compared to this under eye. I feel like the shade is quite nice for me. It's giving a nice highlight, especially because the foundation has kind of dried down dark. So it's better with my neck and chest that I have this popping through. I think I'm also going to use it as a light highlight through the center of my face. That is completely wonky. <laughs> But that is a good concealer. I don't have any new setting powder for the under eyes, so I'm going to use the Huda Beauty setting powder in banana bread. Now that I have the concealer on, I'm going to finish off bottom lash mascara and I'll be right back and we'll start with a liquid blush. Okay, so the liquid blush that I'm going to be using is the Vision Flush Formula by Danessa Myricks. This is the shade Bread and Butter. It's one of the newer shades she's launched, so she has eight new shades. And this is probably one of the most popular ones. It's always sold out. I had to wait a while before I got this. Looks like a really light pink color. I'm not sure if it'll go with this look. But I'm also going to use a powder blush on top so we can kind of make it work. This is going to act more like a base underneath. Just taking a little dot on that same palette right here. And this is again a new brush. This is the BH Studio Pro number no. 3 brush. BH Cosmetics one. Just going to try it. I feel like the size is quite nice for the cheek. It's a very beautiful light pink color, adding just a hint of color. It'll look beautiful on lighter skin tones, I feel like. It's such a light shade, but still shows up on me, which is good. And the brush is really nice, very soft, good quality. And the price is only like six pounds, which is amazing for this blush. Sorry, brush. That is a beautiful color. I think next I'm going to apply powder. I don't really have a completely new powder, but I have one that I've used only once and I can't remember how it was. So this is the powder by Beauty Pie. This is what it looks like. It's called One Powder Wonder and supposed to be universally translucent. So let's see if this really is translucent. It's supposed to also, let me read off the claims. It says it's not just another translucent powder. It's a microfine, uber light, face blurring, radiance boosting, one powder wonder. It instantly blends makeup, disguises fine lines, hides large pores, protection from dehydration, boost luminosity and being ultra fine never ever cakes which is wonderful it says no matter how many times you apply it 
So it seems like a good touch up powder as well. It mattifies with a radiant finish. So probably they mean that it sets the makeup but still has a radiant finish on top. So the brush I'm using is the Wayne Goss brush number two. You can see there's hardly any powder on my brush and that's after scrubbing <laughs> in the pot. So let's see how this mattifies the makeup. Let's test it on my nose. Oh, wow, that did instantly mattify. I am impressed. How much does this cost? I have to check. It costs six pounds and 86 P. So under seven pounds. Wow, that looks beautiful. That really did mattify my skin quite well. It seems pretty translucent. I don't think it's added too much of any white cast. Next, I have three shades of the powder blush. This is by e.l.f. and it's their primer infused blush. So I have three shades here. This is Always Earthy, which is kind of a very nice neutral shade which is what I'm leaning towards for today. This is like a nice peachy color, quite a light peach. It's called Always Peachy. And then this one is Always Rosy, which is a nice rose color. I can go for this as well. I think I will do the rose one today because I believe in my last Instagram video, I have used the Always Earthy one. And these retail for six pounds each, but I picked them on sale for 240 each, which is like an absolute steal. They do have five matte and six shimmery shades to choose from. And the three shades that I picked up were from the matte range. So it's a long wearing matte blush infused with lock-on primer powder to ensure a full day of perfectly placed blush. This blush is easy to blend, perfectly pigmented for ease of application and grips your cheeks like second skin. Sounds amazing. So let's layer it over the Vanessa Myricks powder. Sorry, blush. It looks quite nice. Okay, I think that's a good amount of color for me. <laughs> Generally apply way less. Next on to highlighter. I actually got this for free. It's the Elemasca Beyond Powder in the shade Dainty, which looks like this. Looks quite light in the pan, so I'm not sure if it's going to show up on my skin, but it does have that golden shift to it, so we'll see how it does. I'm going to take it on a Linda Holberg 306 brush. A small amount, and I'll just use this mirror, I guess. That's a very strong, almost green-yellow kind of a shift. It does blend very nicely onto the skin, so you can have it quite sheer like this or build up to your heart's desire. It's a baked highlighting powder with a unique golden green hue. Exactly. So that's why I can see the green hue in it. It adds a subtle luminosity to the skin. So it can be applied wet or dry, which is interesting. So I think I'm going to apply it wet to the inner corners of my eyes just because that eyeshadow palette did not have a highlight. So let's do that. I'm going to get a tiny brush. So I'm going to spray a little bit of my setting spray from Beauty Pie onto a small brush. Actually, I lied. I'm just going to take some water to dampen my brush. Yeah, that's definitely a strong green hue. Hopefully you can tell on camera as well. Like a light green. Looks quite nice. It's an inner corner highlight as well. Okay, so that was the highlighter. That's also a vegan and cruelty free product. And lastly, on to lipstick. I have a few lipsticks to try, but I think the one that will go mostly with this look is the shade by Oma. This is the shade Miriam, and it's one of their badass lipsticks. This one has such beautiful packaging, feels very luxurious. So it has that magnetic clasp. It's quite heavy. And it has the most smoothest twist, I feel like. I was comparing this with my Lisa Eldridge and the Pat McGrath lipsticks that I have. And none of them are this smooth, if that makes sense. I can just play around <laughs> with this. But let's try the shade. This is the shade Miriam. Mm. No. It's a bit dark for this eye. But the formula is gliding on like a dream. 
beautiful. It is quite pigmented, I have to say, and has a matte finish, but it feels creamy almost on the lips, which is very nice. Feels very comfortable and hydrating on the lips. So let's look at the claims. You get 16 shades to choose from in the matte formula. So they say that it's not your average matte lipstick. So it's not only filled with gorgeous color, it's also infused with moisturizing wild mango butter to ensure none of the dryness often associated with matte lipsticks. That completely makes sense. That's why it feels very hydrating and creamy. With a smooth and lightweight texture, absolutely. These beauties glide easily onto lips, depart ultra pigmented, hydrated color. Completely agree with all of those. And you get 16 shades to choose from, including pinks, brown, nudes, bright purples, and classic reds. And this is it. On my lips, I added a little bit of the 1995 Pat McGrath lipstick on the center and the Pat McGrath lip gloss in Flesh Fantasy. But this is the finished look. I am really happy with everything I've tried so far. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If you enjoyed it, definitely give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!